Well, I'm Levi Garrison, and uh, this is my brother, Michael Garrison, who we lost um, a couple of years ago to the DUI accident. Uh, he was a passenger. It's my first time ever doing a video about this. <laughs> kind of nervous. My name is Tina Garrison. Uh, we always did vacations together overseas. We did Sunday dinners every Sunday. Um, he was just a great kid. Started his own business. Made more than me and his dad put together. <laughs> so he had it great going on. I mean, he had the best of both worlds. He had a great girlfriend. I liked her. Um, it's actually one that you wanted to keep. <laughs> and he just made a wrong mistake one day. And got in the car, went drinking with some friends. The friends I didn't like. <laughs> and he made a mistake and got in the car with the drunk driver. We were 11 months apart. My birthday was in February and his birthday was in March, so we were pretty close and uh, you know we had all the same friends and did all the same things. We even did the same job, so yeah, I, I seen him every day and uh, you know, the brother he loved sometimes. He always stood out. We went on vacation down to Mexico and uh, he just got on the stage, did start singing. It, it was. It, it, it was funny. Um, and start seeing in the dance and just being goofy. He always liked being center of attention and making everyone laugh. He was always the class clown of it. Like he had attention on him all the time, all the time. Like even when we go on vacation, like we would go to a show and he would get picked out of the show to come up there and host. <laughs> so you tell me he did not have attention, you know. And the one guy we was on vacation, the one guy goes, wow, you should be up here hosting it and I should be in the audience. Hey, I saw him early that morning um, at work. And uh, I did a job right beside the job he did and I saw him and I was criticizing his work, just, just being a brother, you know. I can do, I'm better at my job than you are type deal. Um, <clears throat> and that was it. I mean, we talked on the phone before that. And we planned on meeting the next morning. They're going to hang out. And uh, that was the last I heard of him. That knock at three o'clock on the door. I don't ever want to knock like that. That sucks. That three o'clock knock sucks. Because you think someone's breaking in your house and not no, it's the cops telling you to hurry up, go to the hospital. But don't be careful. But we need you to get there fast. Those were her. That was our conversation with the police officer. And then that's when I knew it was bad. And then that, that night, um, it was like 2.30 in the morning, my mom had called me, saying that he was uh, in a serious car accident and was in critical condition. So we rushed down to Altman where he was and uh, as I'm getting off on the exit, we see cones blocked off at the Tusk exit, right into that bridge. And I saw a car there, and I was praying that it wasn't him. And then we get to the hospital, and they put us back in the guest room, which we kind of always had a thought, because that's what the guest room's for, sadly. But uh, and then when my mom got there, they told us that my brother had uh, passed away. 
My son passed away, and he left my son there to die by himself. I don't know what kind of friends do that, because our friends are family. Our friends didn't do that. Our friends stood by your side. Why he was in that pain, but this guy decided to leave Michael by him side, his side. That's what hurts the most. As he left my son there to die by himself. Still don't know why he got in the car when he did, um, because he's normally not the one that would get in a car with someone drunk or drive drunk or something. Oh, yeah. Um, so they got in the car and headed down um, 77. And one witness said he, they got past going like 100 and then he drove a little further and saw the car had wiped out. And, from the police report, the car had slid sideways and smacked the guardrail on my brother's side, ripping the whole back of the car off. Um, and then the driver had just got out and left him there and took off. Yeah, so. That just makes it a little harder to deal with. You know, he just got left there. Yeah. Um, he he didn't care. My mom is the one who wrote this, and I read it for her because it was too tough for her to read. But I definitely read it again. Um, Hello, my name is Tina, and I'm Michael Gerg's mother. Michael was a 22-year-old who was full of life. You could always find him at any function, right in the center of attention, being goofy and making people laugh with his quick wit and awesome personality. Family and friends meant everything to Michael. <coughs> and he was always there to lend a helping hand. Michael never knew a stranger and could make friends with whoever and whenever. He was a very hard working, responsible guy who always was looking for a good deal and different ways to make money. Um, if someone needed something, he never hesitated to give them the help they need. He was selfless, loving, caring, and generous. I will call Michael almost, almost every morning to tell him good morning and to remind him to wear his seatbelt. Michael was always responsible when it came to going out with his friends, making sure he didn't drive drunk and let others drive drunk. This is what made the events of that night even harder to understand. On October 7th, 2017, at approximately 3 a.m., we had a knock on our door, and the sheriff's department told me that Michael had been in a car accident, and they said he was in serious condition, and that we needed to get to the hospital right away. That was a moment I lost a piece of my heart, forever. We got to Altman Hospital, Hospital where we were told that he was already pronounced dead. The driver walked away from the accident with no injuries. There are still so many unanswered questions that surround that night. From the report and things we've heard, we pieced together that the following scenario The driver, Frank, and Michael left jerseys in Belden. Frank was driving. They headed on 77 South to a friend's house. Frank was driving at 100 miles per hour when he lost control, 
just after the West Tusk exit, hitting a guardrail on the passenger side of the car. The impact of the crash caused the vehicle to break apart near the center of the vehicle, causing the rear seat and trunk to separate. Frank got out of the car, trying to leave the scene, leaving my son in the car by himself. He didn't try to help him. We will never know why Michael got into that car to start with since it was so out of his character. The trial was very, very difficult to sit through. Seeing the person who took my son's life with no remorse shown and no answer given as to why he did not allow us to have some closure. The driver was only given five years only because another case was added to make it that much. He was out on bond for that case when the accident happened that took my son's life. Five years is not justice for taking someone's life. The decision has impacted more people than we can even imagine. He left behind both of his parents, his brother, two sisters, a girlfriend who he lived with, nephews, and countless more. Michael missed out on even like being the best man in my wedding. And being in his own way with the love of his life. And the birth of my son, his third nephew. Every holiday, family event, and get together hasn't been the same without his crazy loud personality. Michael was the wife of the party, and his presence was always known. We would never get to see our son accomplish his many goals he set for himself, including getting married and have a family of his own. Michael continues to live on through organ donations. There are so many, there are other, sorry, there are many other choices available to make it home safe, safely. If you can pay five dollars for a beer, you can pay a couple more dollars for an Uber. Your life and the lives of everyone on the road are too priceless to drink and drive. I would like to thank the Stark County Sheriff Department for the opportunity and allowing my son's story to be told to raise, to raise awareness to this cause. Actually, something interesting on the uh, Oregon donation that same night we had got my mom, um, she had dealt with all that stuff, but the same night they asked if they would donate his organs. Um, there was a baby in need of a heart stone. So, I mean, that's something pretty serious. So, knowing that a piece of him saved another life, it's kind of helps a little bit, you know, know that he's living on to someone else. I remember it like yesterday. Me too. I'll never... It never goes away. Some nights are hard to sleep. As being a mom, it's hard. I'm thankful for the time that he was here for it. I think about him a lot. <sighs> I love Michael with all my heart. Please don't drink and drive. Talk to your kids. 
And if you don't have a parent that don't talk to you, don't make that bad decision. Just hang your keys up. Yeah. If you're drinking. That's all we can ask for. Hang your keys. Better yet, Uber out and Uber back. Or have that parent or that friend that will pick you up. There's so many programs um, to get you a ride home. Right. I mean, if you don't have a couple of bucks, there's something or some way you can get home with without driving. Right. There's some way you can get home.